Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Caterpillar D2 number 5J1113 diesel engine assembly episode 3. Today we are going to get the liners fully sealed and installed into the block. Before we get started I'll do a rundown of what's on the bench. You remember from the last episode we temporarily installed the liners, checked protrusion, that's why we have these little black dots on there. If you don't know what the black dots are all about, go back to episode 2. You'll see. And we have the new rubber seals uh, for the lower ends of these liners. Two are required per liner and the part number is 7B2125. And this is what they look like. Cat Authentic even has the 7B2125 on the O-rings. So, let's begin. So I'll start with number one liner. Carefully get the upper copper seal off and set back behind. Get to the lower rubber seals. Get the packages out of here. And my cap full of goop. You'll learn what that's about in a minute. Pretty simple. We have two grooves on the bottom of each liner. Each groove accepts one rubber seal. And this is actually the uh, grease form of tire lubricant. I just took this cap full from from the bucket of it that we have at work. Fortunately, we use a lot of this stuff there, so I don't think they're going to miss this. And you just want to, again, make sure everything is very, very clean. Make sure the uh, the bottom side of this, uh, this counter bore lip is absolutely clean, as is your upper copper sealing ring. And, of course, these O-rings are brand new, so they're not going to be dirty, but just make sure you don't have any kind of rust particles, dirt, old cosmoline, anything else in here that could trip you up. So I'm going to take that goop and really lubricate everything around both of those sealing grooves and the flats that are above them. That's just going to aid in getting those seals rolled on. And you want to have everything well lubricated because those seals are going to go through uh, quite a traumatic event when you go to get these pushed down into those block bores. Coat both of the seals as well. Basically everything that has anything to do with contact with this rubber is going to get a generous amount of lubrication because you certainly do not want to cut or damage these o-rings upon installation. That's going to give you a very, very bad day when you go to uh, fill this engine with fluids for the first time. Now I'll stretch the seals over the liner and get them into the grooves and it's very important not to roll the seal when you do this. That's where the like this old dull 90 degree angle pick comes into play. It's not sharp enough to cut or damage the seal but I can kind of roll it around and around here Basically that equalizes everything out and if there were any twists put in it upon installation, it should take them back out. Both seals are on so they're going to get one final coating. Then we'll move on to the block. Okay, back at the block now. About the only preparation you need to do here is to make sure your lower liner bore is very 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 well cleaned no rust no scale no pits is absolutely close to perfect as you can get as well as that little 45 degree lead-in chamfer which is going to help guide those rubber seals down into that bore um, you don't want to have any rough spots sharp spots nasty edges anything around there because that can uh, cut one of your seals or both of them in a worst case scenario and give you a water leak into the crankcase so i've got this whole lower liner bore well lubricated up Again, make sure that this counter bore area is super, super, super clean, and then we're ready to go. Now to install the liner, finally, we will get the upper copper seal placed in the counter bore. And now we will very carefully guide the liner down in, making sure to align the black dot with the V mark punched in at the factory. Again, if you uh, are not aware of what the black dot signifies, go back to episode two, you'll find out. Now, normally you need to actually press these down into the bores. Sometimes you get lucky and you don't have to, you can do it by hand pressure. 
Uh, the manual also states that a wood block and an appropriate driver could also seat these. I just want to see if I can get this worked in by hand. If you can manage that, you're living right. But those seals have to compress a long ways. And look at that. I think I best go buy a lottery ticket. That never, never, never happens. But it's probably just a testament to how well that, uh, that rubber grease actually works. Okay, to be absolutely honest, I'm still shocked that that just happened. Uh, usually you can never seat these fully by hand. You always need some other means of pushing them in. And that's why I left these cylinder head studs in here temporarily. If I would not have been able to seat that by hand, which I hadn't expected to be able to, I, I would have used the same puller bar that I utilized to put the down pressure on these uh, liners when I did the protrusion check and using all of the hardware, flat washers as needed, spacers as needed, and the cylinder head nuts, I would have gradually and evenly applied pressure to this bar to try and actually push them in and get them seated that way, which 99% of the time that's how you have to do it. I'm still a bit shocked that they went in as, they went in as easily as they did, but also to be truthful with you, this is the first time I've used that uh, grease type rubber lubricant on these caterpillar liner seals. Usually it's either some form of soap or like other like dielectric compounds, uh, things like that. But I really like that, that grease style rubber lubricant. It seems to do a very, very good job. And the fact that these pressed in so easily by hand gives me a lot more confidence in the lower rubber seals that they did not get damaged in any way going down into that lower bore. Um, honestly, this is the only part of an engine assembly, reassembly on a cat that really makes me nervous because this is literally the foundation to which you are gonna build the rest of this job upon. And if you don't get this right, it's an amazing amount of disassembly to get back in and reseal these, these liners if you uh, hurt a seal. So either I'm lucky or this little girl just wants to live again, uh, one of the two. So long story short, let's cut to the chase. I repeat the same process an additional three times. Liner number two, ready. Now let's see if I can get lucky a second time and start this one only with hand pressure. Line it at the bottom. Make sure the black dot is in proper position. Let's see what happens. Work it a little bit. First one's in. Look at that, two for two. Number three. <clears throat> Just prepping number four here and I'll talk at you a little bit more, seeing as how I don't have anything else to do at the moment. Um, you know, some guys have uh, asked why I don't just use uh, use like a modern silicone sealer on these on these lower seals. And to be truthful with you, there aren't any on the market that I really trust for this application because when these liners are fresh in the block and you're running the engine. There is a small amount of move, uh, movement on the bottoms of these liners in the block to some extent. Granted, it's minute, but this whole system is designed to where this rubber o-ring is your flexible interface between the liner and that engine block. And I just don't feel comfortable with uh, filling these up with uh, a modern type silicone sealant and just relying on that having the amount of flex and resiliency to basically ensure a permanent bond. I mean, granted, eventually these liners are gonna rust in and they're gonna, you know, plant, they're gonna put down roots and they're gonna be fixed in a solid position eventually um, as the rust builds up. But until then, I'd rather stick with uh, the setup that the original engineers had decided upon and just use just those plain rubber seals. So 
That's why we go to all the trouble of really cleaning those block bores and making sure they're in good condition so that there's an adequate surface for these seals to uh, ride on, to bear up against. And we put all the lube on here and hope that we can, under the best of situations, just go ahead and press these in by hand, like I've done three out of four times already. We'll see what this fourth one does to us. All right, number four, let's see if we can round this out. Just like that, perfect. So with the liners in, I flipped the block upside down. I have it sitting on a nice two by six down there, keeping good tension on those liners. And uh, this is how I'm going to start assembling the insides of the crankcase. Boy, I like to see that shiny metal down in there. Sorry guys, I just gotta, <laughs> I gotta look at it and look at it. Never gets old. So because I don't have an engine stand capable of holding this uh, block, I'm just gonna leave it sitting upside down like this. It's plenty solid and I can start putting everything else into the crankcase from here. And in case you're wondering, before I flipped it over, I did clamp that polar bar onto the tops of the liners and I did one last protrusion check. Just to verify that none of the readings had changed and they didn't, everything still looked really good. So we've turned a corner guys. We're starting to put parts back in this thing. So this concludes episode three. Stay tuned, episode four is on its way. Thanks for watching.